Hey guys, welcome back to Tutorial Tactics FPL. It's Fran here, and I'm back with my Double Gaming 34 team selection. But just before I actually head into kind of discussing my transfers, I'd like to do a brief review of Game Week 33 and how that went for me. I'd like to go man for man and sort of um, explain what happened with my starting 11 and as well as my bench, but probably the bench is the best place to actually start off with. Clearly, Weghorst and Dennis both uh, contributed, and Doherty was a problem point where I didn't really correct because I don't really see the need to have a fifth defender right now with a sort of selection of four at, that I have in the back. Weghorst and Dennis both contributed uh, and, and scored, and that was really downing because I, I, I ended up going for Broyer, who I thought was the more lively option. And when I kind of compared, obviously, Dennis, I wasn't really sure about his position in the team, uh, even though Kucho was injured. But that has excited me to sort of keep Dennis in my mind for the future because he will be playing game, game week 36. There could even be an opportunity for me to actually start him there um, if he still looks good going forwards. But he will have a city fixture next week. So nothing really on the forefront of my mind in terms of Dennis. As far as Weghorst, though, as, as a free hit 37 user, he did contribute in goal scoring today. Um, or at least sorry, in the double game week, but I still wasn't really interested in him overall in open play. And I think he will be someone that I b will be moving shortly away from in the future because he's at, at a 6.4 price where someone like Puki is a much better alternative and has a fiction 36. So that's an option there too. But I could also go for someone like Enkedi, in my opinion, from Arsenal, um, who, who could be a very cheap asset who hopefully if Lacazette gets fully kind of removed from this Arsenal team or if Enkedi gets the bulk of the minutes going forwards, could be very interesting because we did see that Martinelli, for example, was a substitute for Enkedia uh, as a center forward sort of backup in the Chelsea game after Enkedia scored a brace. So that's an interesting sort of point of view that I th I have where I think Enkedia could be another great budget enabler heading towards the end of the season, whereas Broya just hasn't looked good because Southampton weren't able to create enough chances. And it was very clear those are the, the bad option this week. But I think I, I can't really criticize myself too much. The other alternative bench option that really hurt me was actually Sanchez versus Ramsdale. And when I look at the fixtures back again, I, I really did expect Arsenal to get a clean sheet for Southampton. When you look at how poor Southampton was, especially were today versus Burnley, I think that that was once again another good case of variance, I would say, where Ramsdale probably should have got a clean sheet there. Expected they didn't get one versus uh, Chelsea, but I didn't really expect Sanchez to get any clean sheets, clean sheets at all. But he did versus uh, a Tottenham team that didn't look very creative or clinical uh, on the day versus Brighton. As far as the midfield, though, I think there, there are two sort of problems in my team, or even um, three, where Kulishevsky could be maybe downtrending slightly because this Tottenham team aren't creating enough chances week on week. Uh, Barnes is someone who doesn't really have enough minutes and, and, and shares the same sort of problem with Martinelli where he does look extremely lively when he gets to play and, and sometimes he does score but it's not really worthwhile if you are looking at him as a starting option week on week. I, I do still think Barnes is an option that I'd like to think about going forwards because he just scored a goal and for me I, I back the sort of consistency of that where I expect Brendan Rodgers to be able to start him because he didn't actually play many minutes and was subbed off as one of the early Leicester subs. As far as Martinelli he did look very lively and very good in the Southampton first half he also looked very good in the second half versus Chelsea where Cedric had a great opportunity to actually square um, an assist to him but he completely kind of fluffed that chance. He also seemed to be the one who was going to take the penalty versus Arsenal if you watch the Arteta press conference but Saka was someone who took it for himself uh, to sort of redeem himself. Uh, the issue, though, I think is is Martinelli just doesn't seem to be the Arsenal asset I want to own. And I think if I head to game week 36 and, and probably want to recalibrate my team, Kulishevsky will probably eventually make way for Saka and Martinelli will probably eventually make way for someone else. And, and that someone else should basically be a Chelsea midfielder this week. And when I head to 36 as well, you have to think about Barnes being a great option uh, alongside Madison, who's going to be that sort of comparison point. But I feel like that is going to be a bit of a side grade of a transfer, even though Madison might be much more explosive. I just think that by that time, I, I, I do back Barnes over two fixtures uh, compared to Martinelli, who has a much, much better alternative in Saka. So I kind of have to say that Saka for me is much more interesting because he will get the 180 minutes um, in the double game week. Whereas with Barnes and Madison, I feel like they're both capable of being rotated because they're still involved in Europe. And that's sort of how I see things right now. With Kulishevsky, he does have a poor double versus Liverpool, but I could still see myself sticking with him. It really depends on, let's say, how the Chelsea assets that I might bring in this week perform, um, as well as how Tottenham overall performed heading towards game week 36. Because my point of view is that the the fixture with game week 36 is, 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 is great. Um, from an attacking point of view for Spurs, because even though it's Liverpool and Arsenal, we, we know that these games could be quite high scoring, and we've already seen instances of that this season with uh, Spurs and Liverpool. And also, the Arsenal and, and Spurs game, the first iteration of that, 
was in a phase where they were still playing with Nuno as the manager. And I think that Spurs team was, were, were much worse back then in terms of how many goals they could create and how clinical they could be. Ultimately, Son was still the goal scorer in that in, in that first North, North London derby. And that, that's what interests me about him too. I think Son is someone who I probably have to keep as an all-wild carder. I, I can still see him being great and ticking along very, very nicely in these single game weeks since I have the opportunity to maybe make a forward tr transfer and then just move one of Martinelli or Barnes into a Chelsea midfielder whilst keeping Son, Hung Min and, and Kuluszewski for what should be a very good Brentford game. As far as their performance in Brighton, yes, it was a little bit concerning because it's two weeks now where effectively Spurs have only posted an expected goals tally of, of one in both games. However, they did score five in one game and zero in the other. And I think that shows you how impressive some of the individual talent that Spurs have and, and, and how you know hard it is to really go without them. Um, if I was wildcarding, I might be more inclined to move away from Sun, but right now I can't really see myself doing so. As far as the defense, I really think nothing changes. James once again disappointed and probably it was the wrong decision when I even think about going back to the wild card that maybe uh, James could be one of those options that I could have put onto the bench because it seemed like clear that maybe Chelsea would actually miss out on having Rudiger in the team and also Arsenal had great chances of scoring because I did even mention myself uh, when I was kind of recapping the cheat sheet in the previous week that that Chelsea and Arsenal game could be very high scoring. However, I did actually expect for uh, Reese James to actually find much more involvement as an attacking right wing back, but he did play around 60 minutes uh, once again in a game playing right center back. And, and that sort of, once again, takes away his opportunity to, to produce on the attack end. Athpiti Quetzal was someone who actually scored in the game uh, through a mount assist, and that could have been, for example, one of the opportunities that Reese James capitalized on. Tuchel seemed to have actually expressed the opinion that he did that specifically because Reese James you know, needed full fitness, and, and that was a, key, a good way in terms of him playing right center back to actually kind of retain his fitness. But I think he produces so much for Chelsea on that right-hand side, and, and they're completely shut down when he's not playing there uh, at right wing back you know, just in terms of how they build up an open play and how they stretch the field, that I, I can see Reese James ending the season towards that um, or playing in that position much more. So I'm not really overall concerned about him as an asset. As far as Van Dyke, I did kind of go for the erroneous option of going for Van Dyke over Robertson, but I think I paid the price. And also my team structure does sort of warrant someone like Van Dyke or Matip who would be a budget cut and, and allow me to sort of stretch my budget uh, elsewhere. And I, I'm, I'm still sort of happy that I have Van Dyke and hopefully he can provide a little bit of a revenge uh, goal versus Pickford if possible next week. So no real kind of queries there. I think Liverpool are a team you want to, triple up on towards the end of the season that there's no real reason to move away from them and with Jao Cancelo he's kind of locked into that position especially with uh, Walker not uh, being particularly fit uh, with Ramsdale he, he does look like a terrible option so far because this Arsenal team have really struggled to keep clean sheets and um, and that coincides with for example the drop with Arsenal on the cheat sheet I really think Ramsdale could be someone that I could move out um, if I see an opportunity to do so, but just because he plays in gaming 36 and I have the free hit option 37, I just think that's not really a worthwhile transfer and it probably just doesn't benefit um, from a kind of cost benefit point of view. Heading into my Game Week 34 team selection, I actually think uh, I'm going to make a double move where I'm going to go for a minus four here. And, and the options that I've actually gone for is to bring in Enketia and also Mason Mount. The reason why I brought in Enkete is because I really wanted to go out of Weghorst because I've, I I do fancy myself maybe going for Dennis towards Gaming 36. Uh, and, and me moving away from Broya didn't allow me to have enough budget to go for Mount and another forward option who could be interesting. I needed a forward who, who would start in Game Week 34. And I really feel like off the back of his last performance versus uh, Chelsea, I really find it hard for Arteta to not start Enkete versus a Man United team who have shown that they're a very, very poor defense as of late. So for me, Enkete is someone who could be a very hidden gem option the minus four is actually specifically kind of geared towards going for mount and i know a lot of people will be thinking about uh the captaincy between mount and salah or even someone like Havertz if they have the, the budget to go there but i'm not really going to tempt fate i'm going to just go for a, a simple standard salah captaincy and and, and that's going to reverse basically what i did uh way back when when i captained trent uh over salah when he scored a brace and had an assist versus everton so not going to make that mistake again uh hopefully um if, if it's not a mistake, and I'm going to go for the Salah captaincy here. But Mount is a very, very logical pick this week. The minus four makes it worthwhile to go for Mount because he is this Chelsea option who has even arguably, let's say, weaker fixtures um, compared to most doubles. But in a week where no one else has doubles, we know very clearly that going for that move 
for example, when you remember Bruno versus Brighton in the double gaming fixture is extremely worthwhile. And I think Mount is that asset where if I was to have two Chelsea assets, I'd be happy to have James and Mount. I probably would like my third one to be Havertz, um, but I can't really go for that option just because of the way my team structure is set up. And I don't really want to take an additional hit to remove anyone else in my team. So that's sort of how I opted towards going there. And, and the player that actually went out was going to be Martinelli. And the reason why I went out of Martinelli is because, as I mentioned, I probably only fancy myself going for one Arsenal uh, asset going forwards. And I feel like Barnes is much less of a problem because the comparison to Madison is much closer than, for example, uh, Saka versus Martinelli, where Saka has clearly outscored Martinelli from a points uh, kind of point of view. And, and, and I think I have to go towards 36 looking for a way uh, back into Saka. As far as Kuliszewski and Son, as I explained, very, very good single gaming fixture versus Brentford. Hopefully that's going to be a high scoring game where even though they are playing away from home, we know that there are plenty of chances for Brentford to create high score, uh, high goal scoring games versus teams and, and uh, kind of hoping for that sort of reoccurrence there. As far as the back line, it's very simple. Reese James didn't have the best of games versus Arsenal, uh, but neither did any of the Chelsea pieces in the back line. And ultimately, if I I'm still happy to own one of the Chelsea assets. It's probably going to be a defender within James or Alonso. Um, I made the decision to go for James two weeks back, and I think I, I still stick, stand by that decision. I, th I feel like James will contribute, hopefully one of his beautiful double-digit hauls sometime soon. As far as uh, Trent Van Dijk and Ancelo, very simple stuff. The only kind of other uh, main move that I went for was to go for Robert Sanchez. And Sanchez, for me, is a keeper who is sort of surging because this Brighton team looks very, very good. They've had a very tough run as of late, but managed to get fantastic results, getting the two wins versus Arsenal and Tottenham, and then also getting battered by City, which is basically routine, I would say, for most teams that kind of can't match up with City man for man. And that, unfortunately, is the case for Brighton. But defensively, they've looked relatively solid. And the the sort of Tottenham game is a good example of that where they really shut out Spurs uh, on both halves in terms of actually shots on target whatsoever. So I feel like this is a good opportunity for me here to, to once again go Sanchez over Ramsdale, maybe correct the error from last week and go for uh, Robert Sanchez there. As I said, with the captaincy, it's going to be Salah this week. I don't think it's a controversial decision whatsoever. Um, the main reason why I've gone for Enkedia and not for someone like Puki. Uh, as I mentioned, is, is simply just to go for Mount. There was no other real way to go for Mount unless I moved out of Barnes. And yeah, when it comes down to it, Barnes for me was the much more sensible option uh, when you compare it to Madison. And that's kind of how I opted to go for with my team this week. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video and take care.